Okay, so today we're at Heathrow Terminal 5. We're gonna go over here, check in our bags at the first class check-in counter over here, and then enjoy some time in the first class lounge before catching our 12 hours British Airways first class flight all the way to Mexico. I'm starting my journey today at Heathrow Terminal 5. I make my way straight to the first wing, which is a private check-in area available to first-class passengers. BA Gold Card holders or those with One World Emerald status can also use this area when traveling in any class. There's no queuing to drop bags here and I'm able to get my bag tagged up and my boarding pass printed in no time before making my way to the separate first wing security lane. The first wing security leads straight into this tunnel which takes you directly into the first lounge. Confusingly, the first lounge is not where first class passengers should go. This lounge is for BA Gold Card holders traveling in non-first cabins. As I'm ticketed in first today, I can exit the first lounge and go straight across the corridor to the exclusive Concord room. And this is the British Airways Concord Room. I went straight to Concord Dining, which offers an a la carte dining experience. I was led to one of the booths by a waitress and handed the menu for today. For starters, I went for the chicken parfait with chutney, which tasted great. In the Concord room, the champagne on offer is Laurent Perrier Grand Siècle, so of course I had to have a glass of that too. I followed this with the sea bass for my main course, which went down a treat. Not wanting to stuff myself anymore before my onboard meal, I made my way to the terrace where I got comfortable in one of the sofas, ordered cocktails, and relaxed for a bit. While we're here, let's have a look around the lounge. A cool feature in this lounge is the Concorde nose cone in the corner of the terrace. This was flown on the real Concorde and is now on display. Next up, the toilets. You'd think BA would at least put a bit of effort into their flagship lounge, but unfortunately, the toilet facilities are a low point for BA. Not only here, but across all of their Heathrow lounges. Very strong hospital toilet vibes here. The shower rooms are also in the same sterile style. These pale in comparison to other airline lounges in Heathrow like Cathay or the Qantas showers. Sleeping pods have replaced the cabana rooms. Although less private, these felt comfortable enough. I didn't actually sleep, but it seems like a good spot to get some shut eye if you have a longer connection. If you don't fancy sleeping, there are different types of chairs, stools and sofas dotted around the lounge. My boarding time was nearing, so I decided to finish my time in the lounge at the bar, where I had some light bites, a few finger sandwiches, and a cocktail recommended to me by the barwoman. The screen showed my flight had started boarding, so I got ready to go to the gate. One small thing to show before I leave, the boarding passes have the first wing branded, which is a nice little touch. Unfortunately, my flight was allocated to the dreaded A10 gate, which meant the journey started with a not-so-first-class ride on the packed bus to the plane. This provided some good views of the tarmac at least before arriving at the 787-9 we're flying on today. Up the stairs and into the plane, I'm greeted by the cabin crew and pointed to my seat. And here is the BA first class seat I'll be spending the next 12 hours in. I'm immediately greeted by the cabin crew and offered a choice of pre-departure beverage. BA also served LPGS on board in first class, so I went with that, which was accompanied with some salted nuts. I was then presented with the pajamas and slippers and chose my size, which I'll be trying on later. The menu was handed to me and I had a look and placed my order. BA operates dine on demand in first class, so you can choose at what point of the flight you want to eat. The last thing before takeoff was a hot towel, which the crew collected back as we made our way to the runway. No window seat today, so no takeoff views, and there aren't any plane cameras on the 787, unfortunately. This was all made better after takeoff, with another glass of champagne, shortly followed by a trio of canapes. After I finished these, the table was set and my meal service started. I was offered a choice of different breads from a bread basket, and then my salmon tartare starter was served. I love smoked salmon and this was really good. 
For mains, I went for something a little different for me. I'm not a huge fan of lamb, but I was recommended the lamb shank for mains, so I took a chance. This actually tasted great. It wasn't too gamey, and the meat came straight off the bone. There was also gravy and mixed vegetables served alongside. And finally for dessert, I had pancakes with ice cream. You could also get a cheese course, but I decided to skip it on this occasion because that's completely stuffed. Time for the champagne to finish its journey. Let's have a look at the toilets. There's only one toilet in first class for eight passengers at the front of the cabin. Following the same theme as the lounges, there isn't much to differentiate the first class toilets. There are a few extra amenities which is the same as what is provided in the business class cabin, the main difference being these proper hand towels, which to be honest are a nice touch. Before heading back to my seat, I had to walk around to stretch my legs and check out the other cabins. This is World Traveler or Economy in a 333 layout, World Traveler Plus or Premium Economy in a 232 layout, the Club World or Business Cabin sporting the extremely dated business seat in a 232 config, and finally the First Cabin in a 121 layout. Whilst I was walking around, the crew had kindly made up my bed. After all of that food and champagne, I was ready to crash out, so I headed to the bathroom to change the pajamas, which was a bit of a faff in these cramped toilets. Top tip, use the baby tray to place your clothes and amenity kit, which we'll look at later. Back to my seat, or bed now, I got comfortable and managed to get a full night's sleep. I woke up with a couple of hours to go feeling surprisingly refreshed. As we were landing in the evening, the second meal service was dinner. I'm more than happy to eat a full meal after waking up if it means avoiding an aeroplane breakfast. In my experience, even in first class on top tier carriers, the breakfast is never that great. But let me know in the comments if you know an airline that offers a good breakfast in the sky. Orange juice was first up, and continuing the salmon starter theme, I went for the salmon fillet salad. And after finishing that, I had a British beef burger. With that out of the way, let's have a look around the seat. Straight ahead is the large, fixed IFE screen. They have a pretty decent selection of films and shows, but I usually stick to the flight map and watch stuff on my phone. Right under is an extendable footstool, which doubles up as the bottom bit of the bed when you position the seat fully flat. Beside that is a leather padded cover with a large storage bin underneath. This is great for stashing your shoes and clothes or any other large items. But for coats or suit jackets, the mini wardrobe is available to hang things up. Meridian noise cancelling headphones are provided in this premium feeling case with first branding. I tried these on another flight and the quality and noise cancelling are pretty decent. As I'm in a middle seat today, there's a button to lower or raise the divider partition if you're next to a stranger or have had enough of your seatmate. Below that are the seat and light controls. Click a button and then turn the dial to adjust the brightness or seat recline position. More storage under that in a compartment where you'll find the international power socket, two USB charging ports, the headphone socket, and the touchscreen IFE remote, which can be pulled out. And just in case you needed more space, there's another compartment on the inner side of the seat with a vanity mirror on the inside door. Finishing up the seat tour, we've got a large pull-out table with a sleek carbon fiber effect which matches the fixed table on the left. The table is fairly large and is great to get on with any work, or lay out all the items in the amenity kit. British Airways provide a Tempoli branded amenity kit in first class with varying colors and content for men and women. I had a navy colored kit on this flight which contained a eye mask with a padded inner side which I find more comfortable than the one provided in business class, a pair of socks, a pack of tissues, rehydrating ginseng facial wipes, a comb, a toothbrush with toothpaste, shaving gel, a pro collagen marine cream or moisturizer, a deodorant stick, lip balm, an eye reviver gel, a BA first branded pen, and finally a set of earplugs. It's a well stocked amenity kit and I always end up using the items for a few days after I land. The flight was sadly coming to an end and we started our descent into Mexico City. I know people love to rip on BA first class and whilst it definitely isn't up to the first class standards of airlines like Emirates or Singapore, I still think BA offer a solid product, especially if you start from Heathrow. The first wing gives a great first impression, the Concorde room is a nice place to relax before your flight, the smaller 8 seat cabin affords you more privacy and the cabin crew were very attentive, providing a higher level of service. The bus gate wasn't a good start, but that's just bad luck of the draw. 
but BA do seriously need to invest in upgrading their toilet facilities across their lounges. I still think BA First is a worthwhile step up from their business class product, definitely the old club worlds, and even the new club suites. I'd definitely fly it again, especially when there's a low fare or a good upgrade price. Let me know what you think of BA First Class in the comments, hit like, and don't forget to subscribe for my next videos. Till next time.